Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode from the RPA Vanguard channel. My name is Andy Menon. In this video, we are going to be talking about how to filter data values uh, using multi-select drop-down controls in UiPath apps by integrating them with UiPath data service. Let's get started. Several months ago, I had published a video on working with multi-select dropdowns by integrating them with data service. If you go to the RPA Vanguard channel, you can find this video here. It's titled Data-Driven Dropdowns with Data Service. Now, if you watch this video and also download the app, you will see that there are multiple examples on how to use the capabilities of multi-select dropdowns along with uh, the UiPath data service. Now, this session is going to be an extension of that video. And therefore, the app that I'm going to be demonstrating uh, in this session will be the app that was used in the production of this video. And therefore, anything you see will be enhancements uh, to the app that was already previously built. The entity that we are going to be focusing on uh, for the rest of this video will be the same as the one used in the uh, previous video. And uh, the name of that entity is called dropdown list values. And uh, you will find the schema of this entity shared previously along with that video I drew reference to. And just as a recap, uh, what this uh, entity contains are examples of data that you will be pulling into the multi-select dropdown um, controls of that app. So uh, just to focus on a few data elements, I'm just going to switch to, uh, the, uh, to the data and show you what we are going to be talking about. So this entity, as its name suggests, contains a um, lot of data points that are supposed to be listed in a single select dropdown value, uh, dropdown list or multi-select dropdown list. And they are grouped by group names, right? Uh, the default group name uh, is called ungrouped because uh, a data point is not grouped or does not belong to a certain group. But then there are other data points that are grouped by uh, group names um, that correlate with what those data items are, right? For example, if you look at these three values here, right? Uh, they talk about values in terabytes and gigabytes, and they have to do with something called storage, right? So all these three values probably have to do with disk storage, and therefore they are listed with the group name storage. Similarly, there's another set of uh, values, um, again, in the gigabyte range, and they have to uh, they have got to do with uh, memory sticks right so on and so forth just to make it easier i have pulled a few of these values into an excel spreadsheet and you can see that i have pulled uh, about eight values uh, that are grouped under three different groups right named display storage and ram uh, into this excel and i want to uh, kind of show how our app is going to work. So typically, uh, what happens is in UiPath apps, if you have, uh, let us say you uh, you have a dropdown and you are trying to select a value and then retrieve some data from the backend data service, but you don't want a single record, you want multiple records uh, for the value you have selected in your dropdown, right? For example, if I select, if I have a single select dropdown and I select the group name display, then in a data grid below, I would want all the values, right, for the group display to be displayed in that data grid, right? Uh, so what we are trying to do here is by selecting one value, uh, we are trying to return multiple values that, that apply to that particular group name, right? Uh, this is by far the easiest way of doing things um, um, by means of which you are going to organize your uh, data in such a way that uh, by performing a single selection, you are returning multiple records. Similarly, if I select storage, then you'll 
you'll get back three values, right? Or three records. And you do the same thing for RAM, you get three values, right? Or three records back. So that is good because that is the easiest way of trying to filter on your data um, by selecting a value in a dropdown. So if I demonstrate that, it is going to look something like this. If I unselect all, and if I just select display, I get two values back, good. And if I go in and select storage, I get three values back. This is good. But what I'm trying to um, you know, kind of demonstrate here is there will be use cases where you would want to select multiple groups at the same time, right? And therefore, I'm going to have a multi-select dropdown box. And I will be selecting not just one group, but multiple groups, right? A typical use case would be shopping on Amazon or shopping for parts at a, you know, at a computer uh, store, right? Uh, you would want to go onto the website and not just select computers and accessories as the as the um, as the as the search that you're performing, but you also want to on the left hand side go in and select what are the storage options and what are the memory options that you uh, you would want to uh, you know kind of browse through before you can select the parts that you want to buy. So in this case, I'm looking for options for storage. Uh, that's that's good if you're looking through options one at a time. But if I want to look for multiple options, if I want to select storage and RAM, right? I should be able to select multiple groups and get all the values that are applicable to those, those groups on my page. And that is what we'll be doing uh, with apps uh, in today's session, where you have a multi-select dropdown box and you are going to be filtering you're going to be applying if one or more filters using one dropdown list and then the other dropdown list is going to return values that apply to the groups that you have selected okay i am in the app studio and the app you're seeing here is the same as the one that i drew reference to uh, when I spoke to you about the previous video at the uh, beginning of this session. So if you download the code that comes with that video, uh, you will see that this is the same app uh, we are talking about, right? And I have opened this app up in preview mode. And uh, the difference between the one that's already been published and the one here is I've added a couple of new uh, demo items. And in this uh, session, we'll be focusing on the, the option named filter multiple column values. So if I click on this, it is going to uh, you know, bring us to this page where there are several uh, multi-select dropdown um, lists. And uh, we'll start with the one on the right. And here you can see that the UI indicates that there are 35 items listed in this box, right? So if I click on this and uh, you take account of these, uh, you will see that there are 35 items. Now, uh, you might ask, how was this decided? Uh, or how, how did we uh, come up with this result? Uh, for that, you got to watch the previous video. It, it has complete coverage on how uh, you know, we get the counts and how we list uh, the items from data service and populate them into multi-select dropdowns, right? So please do watch that video if you are new to this topic. And the 35 values that you're seeing here are the ones that I spoke to you about just a few minutes ago. Uh, these are all those values that are listed in this entity. And it's pretty obvious that they are not filtered by any specific group, right? Uh, they are all listed in this uh, in this box, regardless of what group they belong to. Now, just for simplicity of this example, uh, what I have done is I have selected three group names, right? Storage, RAM, and uh, I think display. So if I select all, I have taken three groups and I have populated this multi-select dropdown with the names of these three groups, 
right? And we are going to see the same behavior of what we saw in Excel when I start making selections from this uh, drop-down list, right? So I'm going to go in and let me say I want to pull up a list of all display units that are on sale uh, at this electronic store, right? So I hit display and I exit the selection and you see that the number of items listed in this box have changed. And selecting this box, that's good, right? So I have only two graphics display cards that are on sale. Okay, that looks like you know um, the expected result. Now I go back in and select RAM and I exit. This time it's three values. And I click on the box, sure enough, I get three. Similarly, if I go to storage, I get three again. And this time you see they're all again gigabyte, gigabyte and terabyte values, but as you can see, the selections have changed. Now, this is the simple part, right? This is not what uh, the session is about. What I want to do is I want to select multiple groups. I want to pull up, pull, pull up a listing of storage as well as display units, right? Or, or display cards. And I select two of them. This time there are five. And if I click on this box, you see there are three options for uh, for storage and two options for the graphics cards, right? So this is how you are applying filters by using one dropdown list. And then the input from this dropdown list on the left is used to filter on values that are the target of another dropdown list, right? And that is what we are going to be looking at in this session. So coming back to the app, um, I am going to go down to the example that I just demonstrated. And uh, please note, I have given an overview of how this app is structured, but just as a recap, uh, there are a list of examples uh, in this control here, and this is the main page, right? And in the main page, there are uh, there is a list control, and on the list control, uh, you will see options listed. And when you select a certain example, um, you know, to run, uh, the area of this page on the right has another page container and the each example interface or the page uh, is loaded inside of that page container, right? Therefore, if you want to look at a certain example, you got to go down to these numbered examples, right? And click on that particular page to get at the elements on that page, right? In this case, I'm gonna be looking at example number eight. And if I click on this uh, on this item here, it brings us to this interface that we already saw. And here is the first dropdown. Uh, this is the dropdown that offers the users uh, the opportunity to, to select on the groups, right? And what I've done here is I've hard coded this. Uh, there are ways to actually pull them from uh, from uh, from data service. That's something that you might want to explore to make this example a bit more enhanced. But for the simplicity of this demo, I have created a simple list, right? So the list source for this dropdown or the multi-select dropdown is a list of values, right? And if I go to um, Notepad. It's going to be a list um, display storage and RAM. So very simple. And as you see, uh, as you've seen from this example, uh, when this list is applied to the drop down, it gives you those three options from which you can select one or more values, right? And the other thing that's configured for uh, for this dropdown is the selected value binding, right? And it holds a variable that captures all the selections that you have made uh, in this box, right? If you have selected uh, one item, then this variable is going to be assigned that one item. If you have made multiples, then this variable is uh, assigned multiple 
uh, values, right? So this variable is named var multi-selected values. Uh, so we'll keep that aside. Uh, that is all uh, that is required for us to configure this uh, source uh, dropdown list. And then under the dropdown uh, list, there is an expression here. Uh, and what this expression does is it gives a count of the number of values that you, that the user has selected from this box, right? If you have not already observed, here there are, there are no selections made by the user, right? That is why it says that total group selected is zero. But if I go in and select a bunch of groups and exit the box, you see the count changes, right? And this expression here makes that possible. So that expression is very simple. And uh, we already know that there is this var multi-selected values app variable. We simply use that to, to create an expression. And if I go back to notepad, I simply capture this or take this variable and say total group selected. And I invoke the count function and then count of var multi-selected values. Please note that this variable behaves differently based on how, how many values you have selected uh, from the dropdown list. And I have covered that in detail in the previous video, so please do watch it. But overall, if you run a count of this variable, it's going to give you the number of items that you have selected. And this is the expression that is used in this box. So now that we have our selections, it's time to apply the selections of groups uh, to, the, uh, to the data values that are listed in this dropdown uh, box. This is another multi-select uh, dropdown box. And it has been configured to accept the selections from uh, from the from the groups dropdown, and then accordingly return the values that apply to the groups that have been selected here, right? So if I click on this box and go to the general um, attributes, uh, here the list source uh, is not directly a list, but a filter function that's applied on the data service entity, right? And when we apply that filter on the uh, on the data service entity, we take the group values that are the that have been selected through this box and apply that filter uh, to that function, right? Uh, so here you can see that it says, "Give me a filter of all values from the dropdown list values um, entity where the group name." is in a variable, right? The var multi-selected values. So I'm going to write that function out again. And I'm going to say is equal to filter. Also, please do remember the filter is different from the lookup function. The filter returns multiple values. And I'm going to take the name of that entity. And another thing to note, um, I'm just going to emphasize that here. If I go down to my apps, that list of dropdown values entity named dropdown list values has already been pulled into this app. And therefore, this app has got access to, uh, to this entity, right? So the function is going to be filter the name of the entity, right? Dropdown list values, comma. You open the filter up, right? Open square brackets. And now you're going to be applying this filter, the selections that you have made from this list that are stored in this app variable on the group name field of that entity, right? So if I go back into the, uh, into the entities, you will see that it has got something called group name, right? And we are going to be applying uh, a filter on this group name. And therefore, what happens is that my function, the filter function is going to select that 
group name box or group name field dot group name. I'm going to reduce the size a little bit so that it's easier to. And then comma, very important. This is something that you have to note. You're not filtering your dropdown uh, or your dropdown list values entity on one value. You might be giving it several values, right? For example, just one value here called display, or you might be giving display and storage, right? And therefore you're going to be using the in operator, right? Very important. So dropdown values dot group name comma in comma, the variable that has captured all your selections from this list, right? And you close the square bracket and you close the round bracket, right? So if I break this down uh, into multiple lines, filter dropdown list values, comma, open square bracket, dropdown list values dot group name in, one or more values selected from the, the list box on the left. And when you do that, what happens is you see that when you select two groups, the values returned will apply to those, just to those two groups that you've selected. If I go back here and remove that group, you'll just get back one, uh, the values that are ap applicable to one group. So what you have done is you have used one dropdown list to make selections for your data filters, and then you have applied them to another data-driven multi-select dropdown box uh, and used those, uh, those filter values to filter on the data and get you back just that subsection or subset of data that you require. The other thing that you have to remember for this box is that when you filter on a data service entity, it returns all the fields or all the columns as from that from the data service entity, right? Uh, so the other important thing that you have to uh, you have to uh, configure is the column name that you want to actually be displayed here, right? Remember, you're filtering on the group names but the values that you want to display are the values listed in the list value column, right? So if I select group name RAM, then I want the values for that group name that are listed in the list value column of that entity, right? And therefore, if you go back to your app, the other important configuration that needs to be done is to add the column that that you want to um, display in this dropdown, right? One of the great things about this approach is this whole setup has been written using uh, UiPath you know, functions and expressions. There isn't anything additional uh, in terms of writing special events or rules, right? By configuring uh, the events uh, part, of, part of these controls. And therefore, there uh, you know there isn't much work put in here uh, to get a very powerful result back, right? Uh, when working with apps, so uh, if I go to this dropdown and click on events, uh, there isn't much except you know I've put in a show message box just to uh, help in debugging. Otherwise, there isn't anything here. Similarly, if I go to the other uh, uh, box here. Um, and go into events, you see that isn't that isn't even a rule that has been created. And that's why you see this create rule button active, right? The only additional work probably is this expression. And the expression you see under the target uh, dropdown is similar to the expression under the source dropdown, except that uh, if I click on it, you will see that a count function is applied to the entire filter function that we just covered, right? Uh, so to just to complete the thought, I'm going to write that expression out in Notepad. And 
I'm going to simply copy this because this whole thing is what uh, we have used. Uh, and I'm going to say equal to total items in selected groups. And I'm going to say count of the whole filter, close bracket. So if I break this down into multiple lines, count of the filter, of the entire filter function that we use above, everything paired into, or everything kind of combined into one single expression, right? And you can see that with very little work and a little bit of practice on using UiPath uh, apps, functions, and uh, expressions, uh, you can build very powerful UIs. Okay, I have published several videos in the past on UiPath apps, and uh, in those videos, I've shown uh, many, many times on how to, you know, create or compose uh, UiPath uh, expression by using, um, you know, several of UiPath, uh, you know, apps, functions, and expression features. But just for completeness, I'm going to demonstrate that here again, uh, so that if you are new to this, uh, you know, you will find it helpful. So I'm not going to uh, you know, break this. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to select this box and I'm going to just um, replicate it, right? I'm just gonna duplicate it. And when I do that, I have another box underneath. Uh, remember, this is my original and this has been temporarily created just to do some testing uh, so that I don't break the original. I'm gonna wipe everything out from this box and I'm going to delete everything that's in here and everything is back to where it was. Remember, I've already pulled the entities, uh, the entity, the required entity into uh, the, uh, the app and you can see it under the entities node in the, uh, in the browser of your app studio. And as usual is the case, I have an error that is because I have still not configured the list source. So I'm going to say equal to, and I will be applying the filter function first. Double click, have the filter function, open brackets. And then the first parameter to the filter function is your data service entity. And I'm going to double click on that entity. So I've got my entity. Now I say comma and whatever filter function or filters you're applying, they start with a square bracket. So I'm going to open square bracket. And the next parameter that you will need will be the field of that data service entity to which you are applying the filter, right? In this case, it is group name. So I'm going to click this arrow under the entity and I'm going to double click on the group name and then comma, again, very important. It's the in operator, comma, and the last parameter would be your app variable, right? So I'm going to go down to app variables, so all the way down. And here is the variable var multi selected values, double click, and then close my square bracket and close the opening bracket of the filter function. And when I get out, there are no errors. But this is this is the filter that returns everything, right? All the columns. I want to select the column that needs to be listed in this box. So again, I go into the column uh, attribute and then it automatically shows you the entity that you have access to, which is very convenient. And I hit list value, I double click on it. And there I have configured the column that needs to be displayed in this box. And that's it, right? A simple filter function, a few clicks, and you've got a really very powerful feature incorporated into your UiPath app. Um, before we bring this video to an end, I just wanted to draw your attention to a few things if you're not observed already. 
uh, one of the things that you need to be concerned about is that as soon as you load this app up, this drop down here has got all the values from the backend data service populated uh, into, into this box, right? Now, this is a retail site and the example is very simple, but it is possible that you want an app where users must not have access to all data points, right? From your data service, unless they have the ability to access this dropdown, apply filters to it, and only then they're able to see only those values that are related to their user access in this box, right? Now that's a really a big concern if you're building something that has that is sensitive and you're not supposed to allow all users or in your organization to, to you know, look at all the values in your backend database, right? Or your backend data service. Uh, we can, there are a couple of solutions, uh, but in the interest of time, uh, we will cover that in the next video. So that is all for uh, today. And I hope uh, you liked this video. And if you have learned something new, please do like and subscribe to this channel. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.